Now we're going to talk about simple circuits. And I'll explain what a circuit is and I'll give you an example. First, you need to know that every electric circuit contains three things and you can write these down. The first is a power source. And that might, for example, might be a battery. Let me draw a battery down here. Could just be a standard, what you think of when you see a standard one and a half volt battery. Or it could be some other type of battery. It could be a generator. You could think of the power source as the electrical outlet in your house on the wall. But there's something that provides the electrical energy. The second thing is a complete closed path. And that typically consists of some wires as well as whatever else is in the circuit. So I'll draw some wires here attached to this battery. And then the third thing that every circuit needs is a load. What the electricians call the load on the circuit. That's the thing that uses the energy. And in this case, I'll draw a light bulb. So let's put a, a light bulb up here like this. And there's a little glass globe there. This is like a little tiny flashlight bulb. And I'm going to put these wires. Let me back this one down a little bit and um, run this wire to the bottom. And I'll, I'll explain how a light bulb works too. But for now, know that the light bulb is the load. That's where the energy from the battery gets converted into something else, in this case, light. And the wires allow the electrical energy to get from the battery to the bulb. The wires allow the electricity to flow. So they have to be made out of something that's a good conductor. Now, why does the light bulb glow? Let's take a closer look at a light bulb. If I draw one like this, the light bulb usually has a metal casing and um, sometimes there's some threads on it where it screws into the socket. Then there's the glass globe here. It's glass, obviously, so that the light can get out. And inside, there's a wire that's hooked to the side, and it runs up. And then another wire that runs down to the bottom, and is hooked to the bottom. And so if you were going to attach some wires to the bulb, one wire would need to connect to the side and one to the bottom. And electricity would go in one wire and come out the other. And it goes up, up one wire up to the top here and then goes through the filament. And I'll draw a little curly wire, piece of wire like that. And then it flows down the other wire and out the bulb. Now in the filament here, And the filament, the filament is rather long, and it's put into a coil to take up space, and it's very thin, so it has a lot of electrical resistance. And it's, it's designed to have electrical resistance because the resistance causes it to generate heat. Inside the filament, if you imagine a piece of wire, and imagine the individual atoms in here. So these are the atoms of the metal in, say, the copper wire. And then I'll draw these little dashes here. These are electrons. Think of them as little minus signs, little negative charges. And they're moving along through the wire. And as they move through the wire, they bump into the atoms and cause the atoms to shake. And remember that on the, on the microscopic level, the shaking of atoms is heat. So when the electrons bump into those atoms and make them shake, that transfers some of the energy from the electrons to those atoms in the wire. And the wire gets hot. And it's become heat energy in the wire. And it can get hot enough to glow. And that's exactly what a light bulb does. That's exactly what it's designed to do. Even other things get hot enough to glow too. Your stove, for example, if you have an electric stove, it gets hot enough to glow for exactly the same reason. Now, they're not trying to make the stove glow. The purpose of the stove is to, ge to generate heat to cook with, but it gets hot enough that it, it emits uh, visible radiation. It usually glows red. A light bulb gets hot enough to glow in lots of different frequencies, and you basically see white light coming out of it. So if we want to come back to this diagram, I can draw these wires running through that bulb. And there you can see the complete closed path. The bulb itself is actually part of the path, but the path is mainly the wires. But it really consists of the wires and the bulb and the battery. There's a complete circuit, a loop, and the electrons go around and around and around. 
And what's going on inside the battery are chemical reactions. In this case, a little flashlight battery like this, there are chemicals in there, and they react in such a way that, that it, they force electrons out one side and pull electrons in the other. So the, the, the chemical reactions are what provide the motivating force for the flow of electrons. And they, they typically don't flow anywhere when the battery is just sitting there because there's nowhere for them to go. And they don't flow through air very easily because air is not a good conductor. But when you connect the wires in the bulb, you then provide this path. And then the electrons flow through this path. And in the process, they cause the bulb to glow. And as the chemical reactions then run inside the battery, uh, energy is being used up in the battery and is being dissipated in the bulb.